first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for uh, giving me the opportunity to present our work today, uh, in where we study indeed the role of chromatin uh, um, organization in transcriptional regulation. And indeed, in the lab, we are interested in the process of gene regulation mediated by an answer. And what we know is that an answer are often located hundreds of kilobase away from the target promoter and thought to regulate uh, gene expression by interacting with the promoter in the three-dimensional nuclear space. And it, it was indeed shown by technique called chrom chromosome confirmation capture technique that interaction between an answer and promoter mainly occur within a sub megabase domain known as a topologically associating domains or TADs. And what is important to know is that those techniques measure how frequent to loci interact along the genome. As in this example, A and B are interacting more frequently than um, A and C. So therefore, TAD are those chromatin regions where loci interact more often with each other and are separate from the neighboring domain by region of low interaction frequency, which are called boundaries. And it, it is also important to know that TADs mainly arise uh, uh, from a process that is called loop extrusion, where the cohesin complex extrudes uh, loops until it is blocked by the DNA binding protein CTCF with a defined binding orientation. And there are many evidence that actually show that TADs control gene expression by favoring an answer and promoter interaction and gene activation within the domain and segregating and or insulating uh, uh, an answer action across the TAD boundaries to avoid ectopic gene expression. However, the mechanism by which TAD modulate this, the, the enhancer action on the target promoter is still poorly understood. And in this context, what is uh, remarkable is that across TAD boundary, a very small change in contact probability of around twofold can segregate an enhancer from a promoter, enabling functional, functional interaction. While within TAD, changing, bigger changes in contact probability of about tenfold allow enhancer and promoter to communicate, favoring uh, gene activation. So how can ta then TAD modulate an answer promoter communication? Are, for instance, uh, functional, in functional interaction and insulation encoded in their contact probability? So to answer this question from a quantitative point of view, we set up a system that allows us to generate uh, several cell lines in which a specific enhancer is located at different distance from a target promoter. And having this panel of uh, cell line, we can calculate the genomic distance, but also the contact probability between the enhancer and the promoter as function of uh, the promoter transcriptional activity to determine the quantitative relationship that link chromatin organization and transcription. So to set up this system, we then select a TAD on chromosome 15 with very minimal regulatory and structural complexity, meaning that there was a TAD without active genes, enhancer, and functional interaction. And inside this TAD, we integrate a transgene in which the SOX2 promoter drives the expression of a GFP genes that is split in two by a piggyback transposome cassette containing the SOX2 control region, which is the enhancer that is responsible for 90% of the SOX2 transcription level at the endogenous location. And in this founder cell line, the GFP is not translated, but upon expression of a piggybase transpose, transposase, the enhancer is excised and mobilized it around the promoter, which allows the GFP gene to be reconstituted and transcribed. So all the GFP positive lines that were generated can be single self sorted to generate hundreds of lines in which then we can map the enhancer position and measure the GFP level to determine how enhancer position and contact probability influence enhancer, the, the promoter transcriptional output. So when we mobilize the enhancer in this control chromatin environment and we plot the genomic distance between enhancer and promoter here on the x-axis, where the promoter is located here at the, the zero. As function of the GFP intensity that we, me that we measure by flow cytometer um, on the y-axis, axis, it was very uh, striking to see that in all GFP positive lines, it, the answer was located inside the TAD boundaries, indicated that the TAD boundaries are really important in constraining an answer activity. And we also saw that uh, the enhancer can activate the promoter from basically anywhere in the TAD, though the GFP level was decreasing with the increasing genomic uh, distance from the promoter. And indeed, when we calibrate the GFP intensity measured by flow cytometry, 
with uh, single molecule RNA fish, there was a tenfold uh, variation in uh, HFP expression within the tag, depending on the enhancer location, indicating that promoter activity depends on where the enhancer is located inside the tag. So we then ask how contact probability influenced the enhancer action. And to answer this question, we extract the contact probability from the promoter location and plot it against the GFP transcription and the transcription um, levels that we measure in the mobilization experiment. And what we saw was a non-linear relationship between contact probability and transcription level. And to explain the mechanism that could give rise to this non-linear transcription response, we develop a mathematical model of an answer and promoter. And it turned out that the model that accounts for this nonlinear uh, transcriptional behavior is a stochastic model in which when the enhancer is not in contact, the promoter operates in a low regime where sporadically it turns on and give rise to a low transcription level on its own. And stochastic interaction with an enhancer push the promoter toward a more active high regime mode where it can transcribe more RNA. But this transition doesn't occur immediately but in the model predict that it occurs via a number of intermediate steps at the end of which the promoter switches into this high regime mode. And those regulatory steps are memorized from the promoter and this memory allow the promoter to stay in this high regime mode longer than the duration of the individual contact with the enhancer. So when contacts between enhancer and promoter are frequent as in the high contact probability region where enhancer and promoter are close to each other, the memory allows promoters to stay in the high regime mode between contact, which would explain why now these large changes in contact probability that we observe with, between enhancer and promoter pairs in this region are actually buffered into milder changes in uh, um, transcriptional level as promoter often are in this high regime mode. When contacts between enhancer and promoter are rare, as in the case of the low contact probability region where enhancer and promoter are further away from each other, those regulatory steps uh, will make the transition to the high regime mode difficult, which create a kind of bottleneck that prevent or rarely push the promoter toward the high regime mode, which would explain why um, small changes in contact probability between enhancer and promoter pairs in this region are actually translated into larger changes in transcriptional levels. And this mechanism of uh, transcriptional ultrasensitivity and low contact probability can now explain why those small changes across that boundary might completely achieve insulation of an enhancer from a promoter. So we next ask also if uh, CTCF binding site could influence an enhancer action within the TAD. And to answer this question, we use a version of our control TAD, carry, which was carry one CTCF site located downstream at the ectopic SOX2 promoter. And this CTCF site was uh, um, forming a loop, better visible here in the differential map, with other CTCF sites located at the three prime end of the domains. And after mobilizing the enhancer in this particular background, we saw a drop of uh, GFP expression downstream the CTCF site, which led of about uh, a 60% reduction of GFP transcription if uh, we compare the data with the, um, the, that we obtain in absence of the, the CTCF here in, uh, in red, which indicate that in the presence of a strong enhancer like the SOX2 control region, this CTCF site was able to only partially insulate the enhancer from a promoter. But actually, when we uh, mobilize a truncated version of the SOX2 control region, which was much weaker compared to the full length, we saw that this same CTCF site was now completely able to insulate the enhancer from the promoter. And this is suggesting that uh, uh, the strength of an, of, uh, an enhancer can determine the level of functional insulation generated by uh, a CTCF site. As before, we found that the truncated version of uh, uh, the enhancer generate a nonlinear transcriptional response. And the mathematical model was also able to predict the transcriptional response behavior of a weak enhancer by simply decreasing the transcription activity of the high regime mode. 
which is suggesting that transcriptional levels are not only uh, determined by counterprobability, but also by the strength of an answer. So, and with this, I would like to conclude. So what we found is that the TAD boundaries uh, are able to constrain an answer activity and the promoter activity depends on where the answer is located inside the TAD. We also found a nonlinear relationship between contact probability and the transcriptional uh, and transcriptional uh, level. And our ex experimental data coupled with the mathematical model provide a potential mechanism to explain how TAD boundaries might achieve insulation and how transcriptional levels are buffered within a TAD. And we also saw that uh, um, enhanced strength is not only a determinant of transcriptional level, but also of the degree of insulation mediated by CTCF. And at the end, I would like to thank all the people involved in the project. First of all, Luca for the, all the mentoring uh, during those, uh, those years. Gregory, which developed the mathematical model. Julie, that helped me a lot in setting up the mobilization experiment. Eva and Greg for the um, uh, RNA fish. Uh, Josef and Pia, with, which helped with the setting up of some of the, the line. Zan for some of the computational analysis. And Maria for the Capture C data. And you for your attention. Thank you very much, um, Jessica. You were also right on time. And uh, so just, I, I would just remind everybody to please type your questions on the Q&A box. And maybe while the questions start to emerge, I'll, I'll get started. And I have a couple of questions, actually, Jessica. My first one is maybe very simple, important for our audience today, in a sense. So all the work that you presented today has been done in stem cells, um, if I understand correctly. So how, how much do you think it is because uh, stem cells, you know, are um, basically ready to take developmental decisions and therefore, you know, maybe their buffering mechanisms or their buffering models might be different to differentiated cells. So my, my question in short is, what do you think this is a generalizable mechanism? the way you discussed it today with us? Um, but knowing that TAD are conserved uh, also within a cell line or organism, I think uh, it's a general uh, mechanism. Um, I don't think it's due to the fact that uh, maybe stem cells are able more, or more able to buffer transcription. Uh, um, I think it might be a general uh, um, uh, characteristic of TAD. I mean, at least is what we see. It's difficult to predict, but knowing that, I mean, they are so conserved, uh, um, yeah, it might be. Uh, okay, so, so from the TAD kind of perspective, the standpoint, mm -hmm. you can say that this is probably generalizing. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jessica. And then, so the question started to come. So the, the question that, um, so Adam Burton has a um, question. So nice talk. What do you think on a molecular level? makes one enhancer stronger than another? Maybe the, the amount of transcription uh, factors that can bind to the enhancer. So in our case, uh, what we did was to take the whole SOX2 control region, which is uh, about uh, 4.8 kb. And for the weaker, let's say, enhancer, it's actually the half of the, of the SOX2 control region. So maybe it's the number of binding site uh, or the, the, the number of transcription factor that can bind to the to the enhancer. And, and the residence time perhaps on, on that direction, I, I assume. Um, so mm -hmm. the, the, the second question coming from Andres Penagos and then the question is really interesting work. Thank you. Do you know how long the promoter can maintain its activity after losing the interaction? And do you think this can vary between promoters? This I, um, I'm not so sure um, how long um, the promoter can stay in the uh, active regime mode. But maybe I would say here uh, in, the, on, in the breaking room after, there would be also Gregory that developed the announcer and promoter. It might be if he wants to discuss, we can discuss it also better with him. Um, this, um, I don't know how long, exactly how long this will, uh, exactly. will yeah, take. This is also a good reminder to say to everybody that uh, there will be a round table after the, the three talks and we can take that uh, um, 
for the, the thank you, Jessica. There's actually quite a few questions, so I'll continue. So the next one is from Felix Resilias. And the question that Felix has is what what is your vision when multiple enhancers are regulating a gene and contacting an, a specific promoter within a TAD? Is CTCF sufficient to guide those regulated interactions? Um, it, it might be in a way that... Uh, um, uh, so what we see now, for example, if you have a, a, a very like a, a weak announcer that a CTCF site in between the announcer and promoter can block these uh, these announcer, which it's inside the TAD, so it's maybe what is happening inside the TAD. So maybe you have a very strong announcer that indeed can act a very long range because it's actually what 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 is seen for for very strong announcer like uh, the SOX2 control region or. Um, um, yeah, other other an answer. Maybe for weaker one, yeah, CTCF might modulate because it can block, so it can kind of maybe direct the the action of the announcer toward the, the target promoter and not on other promoters. Um, it's um, very difficult to see. So that's why also we set up this system in a totally kind of empty tad to really point out the action of one announcer on a promoter. It's also difficult to understand if there is, for example, um, an answer competition from a same promoter or, um, I don't know, um, an answer cooperativity. So if you have more an answer, what happened? So we, with this system, uh, so far, we cannot answer, for example, those questions yet. But. Thank you. Um, next question from Paquina. Are the amplification steps in your model and the delay consistent format in remodeling and then translation, for example? I am thinking in terms of the known timing for events. Uh, our regulatory step uh, are yet yeah, we think are kind of uh, uh, some um, barrier that uh, the the announcer and the promoter have to overcome before transcription. So we were thinking in this recruitment of uh, transcription factors or mediators and poll two. Um, we never thought about the remodelers, but maybe, so I think it's a bit all together what happened in transcription, you need a bit of time before it happens. So this is what we are thinking, it's just uh, kinetically um, some, some sort of step that they have to do before reaching this high regime mode. Uh -huh. It and might I be also remodelers, yeah. I guess it might be interesting then to repeat in perturbed cells, right? If you, for example, remove mediator and, and so on. Exactly, yes. Yeah. 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 So I'll continue. I think there's actually a lot of questions, but I'll <laughs> take one more um, from um, Christopher uh, Chase. Have you considered testing if having two copies of the enhancer, mm -hmm. one close and one far away, has an impact on the maximum buffering capacity and transcription and output? Yeah, this is actually what we would like to do. Uh, next, so having uh, another announcer, uh, maybe an, an answer that is fixed, and uh, the announcer that can be mobilized around, because then uh, you can really um, um, test a lot of cells, and have a look, uh, um, yeah, whether you have maybe um, competition for the promoters or um, um, maybe um, the two announcers they work together. So this is actually what we also we, we wanted to test with our system. Mm 